Kaylee here. We're talking more about rules of inference and just keep in mind as you're going through this that it's going to be kind of tucked in what we're doing throughout the proofs unit that we're going to be doing in the next three weeks. So it's really important that you're building logical conclusions from each step in your proofs. So um, this might, might seem a little bit abstract and difficult to apply, but we're just trying to understand um, what we can do with information that we know and how we can build and structure our arguments. So we're learning about logical conclusions to try to, to help us uh, prove statements in the next few weeks. In the last video, I showed you how to determine whether or not a argument is invalid or valid. The strategy is to find truth values of your propositions that make your premises true but your conclusion false because then you'll have a conditional that has a true hypothesis but a false conclusion and that gives us a false statement. Now you might also see uh, this type of argument. So this uh, argument comes straight from the table that contains all of the rules of inference. So what's happening here is you're connecting two implications to conclude that another implication is true. So what I'm going to do is show that this argument is valid. And the way that I'm going to do that is show that if I connect my premises with AND, So I connect my true premises with AND and have them imply my conclusion. I'm going to show this is always true. Okay, And there's a few options for you here. You could just use a truth table and you could build a truth table for this statement and show that no matter what the truth values of P, Q, and R are, you'll have a true statement. But since we're still kind of practicing using key logical equivalences to prove a statement is true, I'm going to go ahead and, and follow along with that path. So the first logical equivalence I'm going to use here is that um, with an implication, I can rewrite it as the negation of the hypothesis or the conclusion. So justification over here, I've got P implies Q is logically equivalent to not P or Q. And my next step, I'm just going to go ahead and use De Morgan's Law. So the negation of P and Q is the same as the negation of P or Q. And if you want to go crazy with this and see if you can figure it out and try a different approach than what I'm doing, go for it. Go ahead and send me it. I'll give you a couple points for the week and we can talk about it. So you don't necessarily have to follow the strategy. There's a lot of different ways that you can approach this problem. Okay. Now, something to think about here, I'm wondering if, if we might want to look at those key logical equivalences because it might help us to simplify our work. I'm not sure, but I'm just going to turn to my notes here and see if there's anything with those implications that might help us out. So. And you know what there is? Let's see. There are some things, but I'm just going to keep going with this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and change those negation of the implication. I'm going to write this as P and not Q, and that's one of those key logical equivalences. So that's gonna, what I'm going to write on each of these. So P and not Q, so hypothesis and not conclusion hypothesis and not conclusion. Or 
And I think I'll go ahead and write P implies R as negation of hypothesis or conclusion. So the change, I did more than one change at a time. Um, P implies R is logically equivalent to not P or R. Okay, use that equivalence too. And now I've got all ors. I know that I want to bring that R next to the not R. That'll help me. So I'm going to bring the R. I'm going to reuse uh, the commutative property of or. So P or Q is logically equivalent to Q or P. And then I'm going to use the associative property if I've got P or Q or R that's logically equivalent to P or Q or R. So I'm going to go ahead and group that R by its not R so then I can distribute and kind of condense things down here. So associative property here. And I'm going to go ahead and use commutative property one more time here to move that not P by the P, just so it's there hanging out and ready for me. Okay, and now I'm going to use distribution here to simplify both of these pieces. And it's the same distributive uh, property that I'm using. I'm taking an AND and distributing an OR. So P OR R and Q OR R. So I'm going to be distributing the NOT P, the OR NOT P, and I'm going to be distributing the OR R. So I'm going to have P or not P. That's going to be true, right? And not Q or not P. Or, and distribute here, Q or R and R. Oops, that's not R, right? Not R or R. Okay. Now I'm going to use the property P or not P is true. So I'm going to go ahead and fill those in. So I'll have true and not Q or not P or Q or R and true. Okay, now if I take some statement and a true statement, I just get back to my original statement. So I'll fill in those spots here. So this is going to be not Q or not P. Oh, and this is looking nice. Q or R. Okay, now I have all ORs. So I'm going to use a combination of the associative law and the commutative law of OR to move that Q by the not Q. So I'm going to use the commutative property to write not P or not Q. And then I'm going to use the associative property to group the not Q and the R. Oops, not Q and the Q. All right, so now if I take a statement or its negation, oops, I get true. So I'm going to have not P or true or R. If I take a statement or true, it's always going to be true. Because for an or statement to be true, I only need one statement to be true. So there we go. That series of logical equivalents and, and replacements has shown that this argument is valid. So it's premises as a hypothesis and its conclusion as the conclusion gives us a, a true implication always. So that tells me this 
rule of inference is valid. So hopefully that makes sense.